what's your reaction to this hire? I, I, <clears throat> I don't know if the word ecstatic um, oh, wow. really, really puts into perspective how I feel right now. Um, to see this kid, uh, the credentials are there. He's been a linebacker's coach, but let's look at him as a player for a second here. He's a Super Bowl champion, obviously, okay? Former All-Pro, former NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year, okay? We got all of that, led the team in tackles in 2010. Here's the thing that stands out in my mind, uh, CC and uh, uh, RC. Seven consecutive seasons as the team captain. Mm -hmm. Seven consecutive seasons. When you think about your playing for Bill Belichick, and seven consecutive years, you're a team captain. That says something to me about your character. It says something to me about your football acumen. It says something to me about your leadership ability. And the fact that this succession plan was put in place last year, which allowed them to forego the standard NFL hiring process, I think it speaks volumes about Robert Kraft, who I know obviously very well. It speaks volume about Bill Belichick. This, this doesn't happen, y'all, if Bill Belichick doesn't set up Gerard Mayo to be his successor. So on this particular morning, I want to give major props to both Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft and the New England Patriots hiring the first black coach, head coach, in the history of the franchise. I'm touched by this personally. I'm obviously, I religiously point out the paucity of African-American coaches uh, in the world of football, particularly on the NFL level, even though it's more so of a problem on a collegiate level. But today is a, is a good day, and I'm very, very happy for Gerard Mayo. I'm looking forward to watching this man show what he can do. But do you feel like there'll be a little bit of a longer leash, a little bit of less pressure? Yes. Being that he's the youngest coach ever and in coming up the ranks? Yes, but that's not the reason why. The reason why is because the New England Patriots, for the most part, have stunk for the last four years. You see, if, if Bill Belichick retires or goes elsewhere at the time Tom Brady leaves and you're a Super Bowl champion, then after that you lose in the playoffs, okay, and that's what you're literally piggybacking off of immediately, then that would be different. But because we've seen how moribund they've been, particularly over the last two years and three of the last four years, then I think that if you're Gerard Mayo, you're in a good situation situation, especially after this season, how porous they look this season, to piggyback off of that, I think, buys him a, 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 a little latitude. And also, too, let's not yeah. forget about what we've seen with the Pittsburgh Steelers, where a Bill Cowher follows a Chuck Noll. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Tomlin follows a Bill Cowher. You cannot... Nobody's Bill Belichick. Yeah. But you can have a coach succeed a great coach, and also find a way to be successful. And I believe that a guy like Gerard Mayo is set up to do that in New England. S.A., how concerned are you that Philly's championship window's closing? I'm very concerned. Me personally, and, and when I say championship window closing, I'm just talking about this season right now. In fact, they're going home very, very early, and that change could be in the making. <laughs> uh, you know, when, 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 I, when, I look, when I look at Jalen Hurts, right now you've got that finger injury. That's what you told everybody yesterday. Okay, we got that part, but let's pay attention to this one. The man has thrown eight interceptions this season when blitzed. Who blitzes more than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Maybe about two other teams, and that's about it because they're third in the, in the NFL in terms of the amount of blitzes they throw in your direction. And that's just on the defense, that's just on the offensive side of the ball if you're the Philadelphia Eagles having to contend with Todd Bowles who comes off the bus blitzing after quarterbacks, okay? But then on the defensive side of the ball, 30th in NFL scoring defense, 31st in pass defense allowed. Allowed the second most TD passes with 35 this season. Only the Washington Commanders are worse. Only they allowed more. There's a reason they're home. I'm thinking about it from this perspective, and we have to take a moment to be fair. No, Baker Mayfield is some, not some lights-out quarterback like the young studs we were talking about or some of the older dudes. But he's done a decent job this year. Yep. I don't think mm -hmm. anybody could deny that. He's got a team to the playoffs as a starting quarterback for the second time in his career. Let's give him credit where credit is due. This game is going to be in Tampa. It's not in Philly. It's against the poorest pass defense, obviously. And our, offensively, you've got a quarterback who doesn't look like he looked last year, especially when you blitz him, which is Tampa's specialty. I don't think it spells well for Sirianni and the Philadelphia Eagles, and I think that not only could they lose, but they can end up looking for a new head coach, because if I got an opportunity to get Bill Belichick, don't who start knows? That. Who <laughs> knows? Do you know that this Sunday will mark the 28-year anniversary of the Cowboys' last NFC Championship game? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's the last, it's the last, the month, the anniversary. You know what I'm saying? So, so I'm not, now I'm not saying it's going to happen. But on the 28th to the day, on the 28-year anniversary, could you imagine if the Dallas Cowboys went and lost to the Green Bay Packers? Mm, mm, <laughs> I mean, mm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, man. You talking okay. about something that'll make me laugh, that'll be it. Now, now, now in all seriousness, I got to tell you something. I expect phenomenal from Micah Parsons because yep. I believe in that brother. Yep. I expect phenomenal from Dak Prescott because he's going against that damn Green Bay Packers defense. I mean, this is a... Why this do you is just a can't da- give Dak the compliment no, and say I, I, Dak I, I, Prescott? I was going there. I was going there. I was going, why are we being sensitive? Why are we being sensitive? I was going there. I was going there, RC. <laughs> what I'm saying is I concede Dak Prescott to me right now is the best quarterback in the NFC. Okay. Right now. He's the best quarterback in the NFC. C.D. Lamb and Dak Prescott are the best combo in the NFC. Y'all can tell me whether or not you think C.D. Lamb or... Tyreek Hill should be the Offensive Player of the Year award winner. I, to me, it's between those two. But the brothers big time. When you combine that with how defense, you know, the Green Bay's defense looked particularly its secondary, why should I not expect phenomenal against yeah. them? And if you Micah Parsons and the Cowboys going up against a quarterback who can ball, but in the same breath, this is his first playoff appearance, why can I not expect phenomenal from that defense led by Dan Quinn and Micah Parsons? I say, yeah, okay. No, I'm with you. I think they'll play well. Uh, I think they'll certainly move the ball. Scoring in the red zone, a little bit of concern. The Green Bay Packers defense, although they give up a lot of yards, top 10 in scoring defense, top 10 in the red zone, so there's that. But I would say this, I think that the Dallas Cowboys in this situation, I don't necessarily see them as the biggest threat to the San Francisco 49ers. Wow, who do you, who I, do I just, you see? I, I just don't see it. I, I think it's the Detroit Lions. Wow. I've seen that movie between Dallas and San Francisco mm. enough over the past three years to realize that that's a bad matchup. Styles make fights, and when you look at the Lions versus the Cowboys, who do I have confidence in that can go on the road in the Bay Area and get the win? I'm going to go with the Lions because when you start talking about being able to win on the road in the playoffs, you got to pack certain things. That would be the ability to stop the run, the ability to run the football, the ability to have a quarterback that can manage the game overall. And Jared Goff has shown that. He's got more road playoff wins than Dak Prescott. The Detroit Lions offense has shown better on the road than the Dallas Cowboys. Detroit on the road offensively, six in scoring, tops in total yards, and second in time of possession. So they can play the keep-away game away from the San Francisco 49ers. Their defense can take away one of their strengths, which is neutralizing Christian McCaffrey in that running game. So I like what the Detroit Lions are bringing to the party. They got a lot of young players, so the inexperience could be a concern. Sam Laporta being banged up could be a concern. But to me, it's It's the Lions as the biggest threat to the San Francisco 49ers, not the Cowboys. So here's, here's the reason I disagree. Because one of these teams can hold off the San Francisco 49ers into the AFC Championship. The Detroit Lions would have to see the San Francisco 49ers before the Dallas Cowboys. And why? Right? Why? Because the two-point conversion. He wasn't Oh, eligible. my gosh. He wasn't eligible. Oh, my gosh. To me, that changed the entire landscape exactly. of the NFC playoffs. Because now, if you're the Dallas Cowboys, who probably if you play the San Francisco 49ers, and I'm with Chris, it's a terrible matchup. It's probably the worst matchups, matchup of good football teams in the entire NFL, what San Francisco does as opposed to what the Dallas Cowboys do. But if you can beat them one time out of ten, what facing them in the AFC Championship does is gives you that opportunity to make that one time the right time. And if we believe that Dak Prescott has ascended to the level that we believe he has, he has to show it on that day. On that day, he has to find a way to be flawless against the team that was the last team to make him look like the Dak Prescott of old. The transcendent or the transcension of Dak Prescott started after this game, after Dak Prescott acknowledged that they didn't play to the level that they needed to. The next week was the Los Angeles Chargers. That was a week that Dak Prescott started to use his legs, started to get out of the pocket. They remembered that, oh, we drafted CeeDee Lamb in the first round to be a number one wide receiver. And so I think now the road that they have, not having to face the San Francisco 49ers off of a bye, getting an opportunity to get them in the NFC championships, championship when everybody's level of play should be raised. 
right? When everybody's sense of urgency should be raised, I believe that gives the Dallas Cowboys a better opportunity than the Detroit Lions. Uh, I, well, would agree. I, I, I would say this real quick, real quick, CC, and I'll give you the last word. You know, I would feel much differently and I would roll with you, CC, if the Lions hadn't gotten robbed with that dag on two point conversion. OK, but because they did and Dallas got the victory and as a result, end up getting the division crown and as a result, a road to the Super Bowl outside yep. of San Francisco would have to have come, would have to come through Dallas. That's where you lose me. If Detroit, for example, would have faced Dallas in Detroit, I would pick the Lions. I don't think they will go back to Dallas and win the second go round.